Today's webinar is about some work that was done uh, in the ECSC program um, uh, with um, the code Parafem. This is implementation of, of um, generic solving capabilities in Parafem. And that was done by me, this is Mark Filipiak speaking, uh, Francesc Lebrero Florencio, who was at the University of Edinburgh but is now at the University of Oxford, uh, Lee Margots, um, who's at the University of Manchester and is uh, mainly responsible for Parafem, and Pankaj Pankaj, who is also at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, and Pankaj and Francesc have been using Parafem to uh, model uh, the response of uh, bone to um, load. Parafem is a finite element method program. It's open source uh, with 70 mini apps or driver programs. It's it scales very well, scales up to 64,000 cores uh, and can cope with systems up to a billion degrees of freedom. And it's used for teaching and research. And the um, this is a, a front cover of the book, which is you, which is basically the user guide, but also a guide to actually how to use the, the finite element method. Um, there's a thousand registered users and uh, more than that number of citations of the textbook. and you can access uh, the code through the website and the book you can buy from Amazon. And the book is essentially the user guide for the, the problem, for the program. Okay, so um, all finite element programs have at their core a linear cell of some sort. Um, and that's what takes most of the time in, in, in solving uh, any of the problems. Even if you have a nonlinear problem, uh, you may, it, it may take some time to get the material properties set up to get the elements, but uh, most of the time is spent actually doing the linear solve if you have a large sparse matrix equation. And so a typical program, this is probably the most complicated program in Parafem, would be, um, would be a time stepping or load stepping program with for a nonlinear material. So you would uh, read in the grid, any material properties, boundary conditions and loads. Um, you would create all the data structures to hold the matrix and the, uh, the vectors for the displacements and loads. And here displacements and load could uh, is sort of general. So if you were looking at fluid flow, this would be velocities and well, really boundary conditions in, in fluid flow. Um, so there'd be an outer loop for time or load steps, then an, uh, a nonlinear loop. Uh, and in the nonlinear loop, you would be setting the entries for your uh, stiffness, stiffness matrix and your loads. And then you would have to do a linear solve. So you can see that for, for each time step and for each newton raphson iteration, you're going to have to do this solve. Um, and usually for large problems, you will use an iterative solver of some sort. So Parafem already implements two parallel iterative linear solvers to solve that equation. So you have conjugate gradient, which is used for elastic models, and um, by CG stab, which is used for when you have plastic and flow models. So it's for unsymmetric matrices. Um, and that's much slower than conjugate gradient because it has to do more uh, operations per um, solution. And the preconditioning that's available is Jacobi preconditioning. So adding, there are, there's a whole zoo of solvers and preconditioners. Um, and adding a range of these could give a better match to um, the algebraic systems that you find in finite element um, analyses. So for example, you could use uh, direct solvers, which can be faster than iterative solvers for smaller systems. At larger, for larger systems, they, they, they will be slower and they will take an awful more memory. Um, in the case that's actually of interest to uh, the uh, Orthopedic Engineering Group in Edinburgh uh, is large screen solid mechanics. And in the initial stages when the response is linear, the uh, problems are symmetric, positive, definite, and you can use conjugate gradient. But then um, as you go past uh, 
buckling, they become indefinite and you can use uh, minres, for example, instead of by CG stab. Uh, and minres is, will be faster than by CG stab. Um, the other important uh, point is that you always need to have some sort of preconditioner for uh, iterative solvers. If you don't use a preconditioner, the convergence will be slow. Um, and at the moment, Parafem only has Jacobi preconditioning, although we'll see later that that does very well. Um, and But there are a range of other preconditioners. And in general, they will reduce the number of iterations to solution, but each iteration will take longer. And it's usually the case that you get a shorter time to solution, but not always. So what could we do to increase the range of solvers? Well, we could write a whole load ourselves, uh, but uh, there are several solver libraries available which have been developed over many years and are uh, well maintained and will be developed for uh, many years to come. The two main ones that uh, are of interest really are Petsy and Trilinos. There are a few others, uh, but these are the ones that uh, have the widest range of solvers preconditioners. Um, so Petsy, uh, both of them are developed um, in the United States. Uh, both of them have a range of linear solvers, preconditioners. They also have nonlinear solvers and time integration. Um, we don't, we haven't used those in the CCSE, but it would be possible to in include those in um, Parafem in the future. Uh, the, um, for PETC is a high level interface, so you, you don't have uh, Fortran arrays, C um, arrays, the basic objects are matrices and vectors and solvers. Um, for PETC, PETC is written in C, uh, but it has a Fortran, uh, a Fortran interface, which is um, well maintained. Um, and it can also interface to other libraries. So as well as PETC, you can interface to uh, different multigrid solver um, libraries, and also to direct solvers, MUMPS and SuperLU. So you can, if you've built PETC uh, uh, with all these uh, external libraries, then you have access to all of these facilities. And the, the version of PETC that's on Archer has been built with, with um, all of these uh, libraries there. So they're all available. Trilinos is, uh, is similar to Petsy in the range of solvers and tools. It's written in C++. Uh, unfortunately, the Fortran interface, uh, certainly when the CCSE was um, being done last year, is, is out of date. But this is currently being rewritten. Um, so hopefully in the future, that will also be available for Fortran users. And similarly, uh, Trilinos will interface to a variety of other libraries. And in fact, Trilinos can use Petsy, and Petsy can use parts of Trilinos. So, so we've chosen to use Petsy. Um, and uh, this is an example of what you would have to do if you, if you use Petsy directly. So if we have a look at, um, we have this. Creating the stiffness matrix is one step, and then setting the entries in the stiffness matrix is another step. So in, in Parafem, you have to go through some steps, but uh, we want to make this as simple as possible. In PETC, if you use it directly, you would have to go through this whole sequence of um, calls. And this part here is, in, uh, sorry, this part here is, uh, actually hides a lot of uh, work being done in this point. And then setting the entries in in the matrix, um, you have this this loop here you is will be the same as in Parafem. You have to go through all the elements, you have to calculate the element stiffness matrix um, and the local to global in, index mappings and then you you um, have to set the values in the global matrix. In Parafem, this you wouldn't have to work out the global mapping, but you would have to set values again in a in a local 
um, array of element stiffness matrices. And finally, you have to assemble the matrix. So what we wanted to do is to try and wrap that all up um, so that the uh, driver programs or that, that Parafin provides, you could easily um, modify those to give uh, to use Petsy instead of Parafin. But we also wanted to be able to choose between Parafin and Petsy solvers and also the various solvers and preconditioners in, in Petsy. So what are the characteristics of the two, um, the two libraries, Parafin and Petsy, that make this easy or more difficult? The, um, so in Parafin, we already have the two Parafin solvers as subroutines. So choosing between those in Parafin is just a matter of calling the right subroutine. Um, the most complicated control sequence in Parafem is, is, would be this um, load stepping nonlinear uh, loop and then the solver. Because it's got quite a simple control, control structure, we can use, we don't need to do, um, we can wrap up quite a lot of the Petsy uh, steps uh, into uh, subroutines that can fit into to um, substitute for these steps. Um, because of the, the relatively sim simple structure, there's only one matrix, one solution vector, and one load vector, uh, and they're stored as Fortran arrays in Parafem. The matrix structure is fixed, um, but the matrix entries can change in nonlinear problems. So uh, this step here, uh, we'll have set the entries in, in the matrix. But generally, the, the matrix structure is fixed. If, if it does change, then you would have to go through um, recalculating re, uh, all of the global mappings, uh, and that's not currently done. One thing which is uh, just to note, really, rather than uh, is something that um, is needed in Petsy is that in Parafilm the matrix is stored unassembled. So each element matrix is stored um, on its the process that the element is on uh, in an array. Um, Parafilm also provides all the global mappings between elements and degrees of freedom. Um, so we can all of that um, information is available for us to use in um, when assembling the matrix in Petsy. Um, the driver programs use a control file, so there's no GUI. Um, so we could use a control file for Petsy as well. Um, and a, a sort of technical point is that equations corresponding to restrained degrees of freedom, so um, Dirichlet boundary conditions, are removed from the system. And that, that does limit to an extent the number of the types of preconditioners that you can use. So what about Petsy? Um, so the matrices and vectors are stored as C structures, mats and vecs. Um, and matrices are stored in an assembled form. So instead of um, having per, instead of keeping the element matrices separate, they are um, put into a global matrix, which is which is distributed over the processes. And that means you have to have an extra step when assembling a matrix. Uh, you, have to you have to distribute all of that uh, information around. Um, so an, uh, another technical point is that um, you need to pre-allocate the memory for storing the matrix. Otherwise, uh, the, when you add elements, it becomes very slow. Effectively, you're having to do freeze and Malux every time you uh, add a few more elements. Uh, but Petsy can calculate the amount of memory needed. And, and that's uh, a more recent thing. That's only in um, the most recent version of Petsy. Um, and that's useful. It's, it slows down your setup a bit. But in comparison with uh, either uh, the slow assembly or the large amounts of memory that you'll be wasting if you if you uh, overestimate the memory, um, 
it's, it is worth it. And PETC has also got a control file. It's a different format from Pyrofems, but that can set the solver and preconditioner used, etc. So based on uh, what Parafem and Petsy was like, we designed the program so that we wanted the program to be able to use the Parafem solvers or the Petsy solvers, or to be able to choose between them. Um, because the Parafem matrix and vectors are quite different uh, in structure from Petsy, those are converted to Petsy mat and vec structures when using the PETC solvers. Uh, but because there's only one matrix, one solution vector, and one load vector, uh, all of these data structures can be held in one global data structure, and this simplifies the interface considerably. Um, the other decision made was to use the PETC control file uh, rather than specifying options in the Parafem control file and uh, converting them to Petsy options. Uh, the advantage of that is that uh, so the advantage the advantage is that it reduces maintenance. Having uh, having done this before with with on a different program, uh, if you if you have something that translates from your control file options into Petsy's control file options. It will never keep up to date. Petsy is modified very often. Um, so that re it reduces maintenance. You also have all of the Petsy documentation available. Um, and so that, so you can use that with, a, we don't need to produce a sort of extra layer of documentation. Um, and this is just to do with control file, not necessarily whether we do it with Parafem or Petsy. You can, um, have several solvers and preconditioners listed in the control file and chosen. Um, and we also wanted to still have direct calls possible to Petsy, and that that still is possible. And you can use the the global data structure to um, hold the matrix. Uh, the other point is we we don't use nonlinear and, and um, load stepping routines. Um, at the moment. I, I'm not sure that there'll be any advantage necessarily because they're also um, newton Raphson methods and uh, to progress further with, with um, the nonlinear solvers in Parafem, uh, you would want to move to arc length methods. So this is an example of what it will look like uh, if you use Petsy and uh, and you'll see that it's pretty close to what the simple uh, case with Parafem is. So there, you have to you have to initialize Petsy. But that's just a uh, one step. Um, it's just to set up the the structures, um, and all of the uh, creating the matrix and the vectors and the load vectors is now just as one subroutine p create and that so basically you just call that as just after you set up your um, global to local mappings in parafem then you can call p create with the the mappings um, we have zero the matrix well it's pretty easy to do and then going around this loop uh, there is the you have to do this you have to calculate your element matrices and then it is add element and then finally p assemble to assemble it so you're just it it fits in very well with the the parafem structure and finally there's a solve step and uh, so that actually uh, wraps up some extra stuff to set up um, some of the parameters for the solve and the actual wrappers, uh, I've covered most of them. There's an extra one here, which is, uh, this one worked, yes. Um, we can choose between, the choice between Parafem and Petsy solvers is done. You can do that on the command line. So you could write your code so that it used either Parafem or Petsy. Expect you would use one or the other in your programs. Um, one X, so, Two, sorry, the shutdown just to tidy up afterwards. Two extra uh, wrapper routines is if you have 
non-zero constraints, um, for example, in um, say Navier-Stokes uh, solvers, you need to um, include those by modifying the global matrix and and putting the um, and, and modifying the load vector um, by the fixed freedoms. The only problem with this is that it gives you a um, unsymmetric matrix. So at the moment, that couldn't be used for uh, symmetric um, matrices. And finally, you can, I said that you can, during runtime, you can choose which solver to, to, to use. And this could have been wrapped up in, um, in PSOL, but in fact, it's a bit more sensible to put it into a separate um, setting. So you, you choose the solver, and then you might use it for several iterations around your um, nonlinear loop. And how do you choose a solver? So there, there, there is this this um, this wrapper, um, and you actually in the control file you can choose the solvers. You can set up the solve the set of solvers you want to use. So this is an example for a control file. You say I want two solvers, um, and I've set these up as solver one and solver two. I'm they're just so you will call U solver one and U solver two. Um, so in this case, we've got a conjugate gradient solver. You set the tolerance and the uh, number of iterations and the preconditioner. And here's another one which is minres. So for example, if you have a problem which you can use conjugate gradient for a while and then you detect that um, it's becoming indefinite, has become indefinite, then you can start using minres just by calling PU solver rather than actually having to, to write your rewrite part of your program. So the main the main reason to add PETSI was to increase the range of solvers, but we also compared PETSI and paraffin solvers for, th for three of the driver programs. Um, and these are based, so XX18 is based on uh, one of the existing programs in the um, textbook. XX17 is based on a different one. XX15 is an experimental um, program which uh, will eventually become part of the um, suite of programs in the textbook. So there were three cases. Um, linear elastic solid in small strain regime, and so that's symmetric positive definite, and we can use conjugating Jacobi. Uh, XX17 is uh, steady state cavity driven flow, and that's incompressible fluid and that's unsymmetric, so you need by CG stab. And the one that's of most interest to um, the group at Edinburgh are the is the uh, large strain large strain solid um, mechanical modeling of of trabecular bone, but in fact this XX18 will work for any nonlinear elastoplastic um, problem, and so that's a symmetric case that starts out as positive definite and will become indefinite uh, after buckling. For this case, we only modeled the conjugate the pre-buckling regime. We tested this actually on the TDS, which is a small version of um, Archer, uh, a thousand cores, but that was enough for these tests. Um, it has about twice the communication bandwidth of Archer. That's, uh, that, so what I mean is actually there are fewer users using it. It has the same, effectively the same communication bandwidth but um, it's not as heavily loaded, so you see uh, a smaller, um, you see a, a effectively higher bandwidth. And also it's in one cabinet, there's no uh, inter-cabinet links either. So XX18, um, this, I think everyone has used Parafem here, so it's a, a cuboid with a uniformly loaded patch on, one, on the center of one face. And it's using um, 20 node hexahedra, uh, so quadratic elements. And in this case, it's a 1 million element grid. So it's 12 million equations. And we use conjugated Jacobi preconditioning. And a comment that the processes were distributed equally across 
eight nodes. So I'll just I'll come back to the slide in a moment. We'll just have a look at the graph. So if you look at um, there's the time, the Petsy time and the Parafem time, they both include the setup, uh, so the assembling the matrix and the solution as well. Uh, so generally, Petsy will be slower to set up the matrix because it has to do the assemble step. Um, Parafem, it's this, the assembly is very quick. Um, so in this case, you can see that Petsy is about 30% faster than Parafem. Um, and it looks like it looks like the um, it looks like the scaling the the there's a slowdown at larger numbers of processes. That's actually just an artifact. What is happening here is not that communications is becoming dominant, but it's it's two effects. One is um, as you increase as I increase so at eight nodes and eight processes, there's one process per node. And then at 16 processes and eight nodes, there's two processes per node. And as the number of nodes increases, the memory bandwidth per process is reduced um, because there's a limited bandwidth and you're, you're sharing two uh, uh, processors on each node. Um, and fine terminal codes are are always memory bound so that's one effect and that's the dominant effect in fact um, and the other effect is that turbo boost is enabled on the processors so that on a processor if you have if you're using just one core on a process sir uh, you will actually it will actually go slightly faster per core than if you're using all 12 cores um, so it's to do with the the power consumption or rather the heating. Um, so those those effects are uh, it's just the way that that I had uh, done the simulation. Um, so for time, Parafem and Petsy are similar. What is very different for Petsy is the memory use. Parafem, you can see the memory use is about uh, 30 gigabytes, no matter what how many processes you have. For Parafem, it increases uh, considerably as you get to large numbers of processes. So it's about three times as much. Um, so the reason for this is that um, when the matrix is being assembled, it, the, as the elements are added, they are, uh, th there's no communication at that stage. Any off-process entries are just stored in temporary arrays in on each process and then finally the p assembles at, when they actually distribute these um, then all that memory is released but it's sufficient to call that uh, memory increase that temporary peak in memory uh, usually uh, the if you have something like archer which is distributed memory the total memory available increases much faster than peak memory requirement. You would notice this more if you're going to smaller numbers of processes. And at those ones, you're probably not going to be running such large um, simulations because they will take so long to run. Um, the, other, the other thing to note is that the number of off-processes entries will depend on the how well the problem's been partitioned. In this case, it's just been sliced up in uh, one-dimensional slices. So uh, that's not ideal. Um, I did do some tests with using the Parmetis version of this, but it didn't that, that really that didn't make much difference. So um, maybe there are some other effects. So XX17, this is uh, this is um, a driven cavity flow, which is quite always quite difficult to to uh, to solve. Uh, these are discretized with Taylor Hood elements. Um, it's a non-linear problem, so there's a Newton-Raphson solver. And it's an symmetric problem, so we use by CG stab and with L equals four. And there's no preconditioning here. Jacobi preconditioning makes this worse. Um, I'm not sure if that's because it's unsymmetric or because it's a saddle point problem. Uh, and in this case, we use this uh, subroutine 
P0 rows because there are non-zero constraints to the velocity of the driven boundary. In this case, uh, there are, in Parafem, there are um, utility programs to generate various sizes of cases. Uh, in this case, uh, I tried three, small, medium, and large. The small case was fine. The results were the same, and um, the performance was uh, similar. But in the medium and large cases, there were there were larger differences. Um, sorry, differences are larger than the solve tolerance. And um, even if you ordered the reduce and scatter operations, there were still um, large differences. And the cause for these is that uh, PETC by CG stab diverges at one of, so it works fine for a few newton raffs iterations and then at one newton raffs iteration it diverges and then after that it has to um, try and get back to convergence and so it takes many more newton raffs iterations. Um, it's not clear why this is not working. By CG stab in PETC is modified but um, Looking at the code, it's, it's quite similar to what is in Parafem, uh, but that may explain the difference. And certainly further work would be needed to resolve those um, differences. Uh, so in this case, uh, Parafem is doing much better than, it's about two times faster than, um, than Petsy. So XX15 is, uh, is, to look at large strain plasticity problems. Um, this again is nonlinear, and uh, Pankaj's group at Edinburgh uses XX15 to simulate uh, trabecular bone. And for this, we've so apart from the bone modeling cases, there are several other test cases available in um, in the repository, which I'll speak about later, uh, which has been provided by Francesc. Uh, which can be used for testing XX15 if you want to do regression tests. So this is a bone modeling test case, um, and the bone structure, the geometry of the bone structure is generated through um, X-ray tomography. Uh, and for this test case, we've got seven and a half million elements, 26 million degrees of freedom. And these are linear hexahedra, eight node hexahedra. Um, I don't think I can, can I zoom in on this? Yeah, you can, no, I can't zoom in detailed enough, but they, the elements are basically the texture there. Uh, that's the size of the elements. So you can, so if you can imagine the pixels there are about the size of the element. Um, and for these tests, the load was kept in the range where uh, conjugate gradient could be used. So this is not getting anywhere near, um, the region where it becomes definite. So in this case, um, it's a similar plot to the one for the linear case, but a uh, much larger range of processes. So we're starting at about 70 processes, going up to 1,000. Um, and you can see that Parafem is scales almost ideal scaling. Uh, Petsy I don't quite know what happens here, but uh, we get slightly poorer, slight slow down, and then we're back to um, ideal scaling. And Petsy at large process counts is slower than uh, paraffin. It's not clear why, it could be the geometry or um, because we're using linear hexahedra, so you have different, uh, different numbers of non-zeros in rows. Uh, but it's pretty. It's it's still similar to the um, time taken for for parafems. It's about ten percent. And again, as before, uh, the PETC peak memory is much larger than the. So, sorry, yeah, the yes, the PETC peak memory is uh, much larger than the parafem peak memory. Although parafem, as the process counts go up. It also needs more and more memory, um, but nothing like as much as Petsy. So to summarize, Petsy versus Parafem, they have similar time performance for the same solver. I think it depends very much on the on the problem, uh, but.
Etsy requires much more memory than Parafem. Um, however, the main value of adding Petsy to Parafem is to make um, is to provide a wide range of solvers so that users can choose the most suitable solver for their problem and also can change it during runtime. So the where can you get Parafem and Petsy uh, to try out? So register on the Parafem website uh, and the Parafem subversion repository is on SourceForge. So there's, there, there's a, a release version on the website, but the uh, Parafem Petsy interface is in the, the Petsy branch of the subversion repository, and that will eventually be merged into the trunk. Uh, the current stable version is um, 2237 on that, and that's the, the latest version as well. So that includes uh, the interface. Um, it has uh, a build script for Archer. It has a user guide, which is in the same format as the, as the textbook. Uh, and it has example pre programs together with control files and Archer job scripts so you can run um, the test cases for XX18, 17, and 15. So the conclusion is Parafem has a wide range of solvers and preconditions is available through the Petsy interface. So it basically has um, increased many fold the number of solvers that are available. And just a final slide, this material can all be reused. Some, there are some images owned by others. So I would say probably the bone modeling image and the uh, front cover of the Parapen book. So there are some questions. Uh, let me see. Petsy memory use is worried. What about 500 or 1,000 nodes? Um, I don't know. Uh, it, although it goes, although it seems to go up very quickly, if you plot the memory uh, available, it, it goes up much faster than pets. I haven't. You're right. It should really be investigated at, at higher numbers. Uh, I think it's partly the um, it's partly the partitioning. The partitioning in XX18 was just one dimensional. So eventually you'd get to a point where you have more surface than volume and something like Petsy will not, you will get large temporary um, effects. If by CG stab doesn't work, no good for unsymmetric stiffness matrix. Yes, that is correct. I'm not sure. I don't know what's wrong with by CG stamp. Uh, I don't understand why it's giving such different results, uh, even with the um, even with ordered reductions. The the actual within Petsy itself, there's there are some um, reduces which I. I can't get to be ordered because I can't. I could build. Re, I could build Petsy um, myself, but then I'd have to go into the guts of Petsy to order to make sure they're ordered. Um, and those give very small differences, sort of like the um, machine precision differences. Whether they amplify, I don't know. The the other thing is the. Um, I don't know how well conditioned or ill conditioned that cavity case is. I haven't looked at the condition number of it. Um, maybe you know from your test with it. It yes, yeah, it has to yes, yes. So um, yep, I don't know. I don't know whether. Petsy's by CG stab has been tested with something like that. So as I say, what happens is it's okay for a few Newton rafts and iterations and then it diverges, um, which shows that something is 
it's not just that it is not doing very well and takes a bit more effort, it's actually failing at one step. Um, so and it is possible that I have done something wrong with the um, the interface which for XX17 because that has the difference between that and the other cases there's the non-zero restraints the non-zero restraints in XX15 is hand, are handled differently um, because it's it I mean it's using different conventions from the rest of Parafem so that's still to be I miss one element would break it yes but okay, that's true but if I for a small case this is only for the medium and large cases is that it, it diverged for a small case the behavior was fine it was still a bit slower um, but it was fine so I think that's uh, if there are any are there any more questions or comments uh, yes, exactly. It's something for the future, but I XX17 was the last one to be done, so uh, I may have missed something in the zero rows um, subroutine. Okay, so um, if there are no more questions, then uh, Thank you for attending. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, bye-bye.